There you go, girls. There he is. The request of Shane Woden. I've 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 uh, done my best work and got him on the show. Do you know why we? There was a lot of female interaction wanting to see you uh, and where you're at at the moment. So there you oh, go. Man. Feel good about that. <laughs> yeah, no blonde hair anymore. Go no, on. what's going on there? You used to bleach it. Yeah, used to. Um, I thought I'd better grow up yeah. and actually become an adult. And um, <laughs> once I stepped into coaching, that was it for me. Yeah. I'd have stopped being a lad. That's the thing. I think a lot of people probably wonder where Show My Woden's gone. People like me, they see me all the time. They're sick to death of me. But you... You love so, Media Street, though, don't yeah, you? I do. I do. Yeah. I do. I'm, I'm, you know me too well. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know out there, Show My Woden and I, besties for a long time, Best man at my wedding, I was best man at yours. That's still that hasn't changed, has it? We're still we're still good. Still besties. <laughs> I think you've lost my phone number a few oh, times. But... <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Your journey, mate, post career, post Collingwood. Obviously, we know what happened there. We don't need to even touch on that. But post that, yep. you've gone into coaching, and now where you're at, go for it. Yeah, went into coaching. Oh, two years after I finished at the Pies, I did a couple of years at East Fremantle playing just to finalise the career, then went straight into coaching, coached the Sharks over here, disappeared up and over to Brisbane for six years with the Lions, which I thoroughly enjoyed, become mm. a bit tiring at the end. Um, then I suppose needed a fresh start, new change, new challenges, uh, new ways of learning. So I wanted to continue in the AFL world, but um, soft cap came in and limited opportunities um, looked to get back to Victoria didn't eventuate so I decided to bring the family back to WA so that's where I've been the last five years and probably now looking to put the whistle away and step away from coaching and just focus on a few other things outside of footy now and build new journey and new career pathway um, in the corporate sector well, we'll get to that. Let's go backwards, though. I think what people are really was what what is resonating with people at the moment is how it all began. And yours was a very interesting story because it's probably heralded. Everyone knows that you came over as an invitee to the club, winging a prayer sort of stuff, hoping to get a spot on a list. You've said yourself you weren't the greatest junior, uh, but things started to click a little bit around about the age of 20, 21, really damaging by foot. That was seen by the Melbourne Football Club. You come over uh, from the Sharks to play for, for Melbourne and it all just sort of clicked for you uh, in 1997, 98. That journey, mate, go for it. Yeah, knew he gave me a call post-96 draft and thought I was probably getting a pre-season before Christmas. Didn't eventuate, went over in January, lobbed in, I think, the first week of Jan for a two-month trial period, really, with the club and... I think I was one of 15 mm. invitees that year, Robbo. Mm, yeah. um, Robbie Pyman, Big Juice Newton, uh, with the two others that were drafted in that preseason draft. But, mate, a couple of months to put your best foot forward, showcase yourself, um, learn as much as you can, destroy the coaches' rooms as much as you can to see if you can uh. pick apart anything you need to learn. And then, um, mate, I think a scratch match against Richmond at Waverley, um, we didn't play a hell of a lot, but look, my commitment to the cause was probably a, one of the strengths. And then got a few kicks that practice game and that sort of set the set the tone for hopefully some decisions being made to be drafted. Then, you know, weeks later, Cameron Schwab grabbed me into his office and that was it. We're going to draft you tomorrow. You were, <laughs> you were unbelievable in 97, 98. Things just sort of uh, went well for you, but it wasn't always easy. Um and one of those hardships for you, I think, was this professional attitude that you brought the, just before it turned professional. It became really professional in around about 2000, but you were trying your guts out all the time. And there's this idea that you've got to drink and be a larrikin and have fun to play football, but you sort of brought a different attitude. Did you ever feel that pressure? Uh, no, not at all. I, I felt it was, it was one of my strengths to, yeah. um, in, in my preparation to be the best I could be. And I knew that I, again, wasn't the most talented. So, um, and as we know, talent loans never enough, yeah. but there had to be some other things that I had to just bring to the fore early to make sure my career wasn't ending in one or two years. It was going to be a longevity thing. So um, yeah, preparation was the key, whether or not that was on field or off field, but doing everything I possibly could to um, get a game, mate, build a career. That's mm. something I've pretty learnt. You know, when I was coaching at Brisbane, um, uh, Gary O'Donnell used to tell our young kids, and you know, you're not here just to get a game; you're here to build a career. So, yeah, yeah. 
um, I think early days we're all there to get a game and um, yeah. hopefully get one. But we, when you resonate with some experience like Gary O'Donnell and things we're trying to push on and develop our kids with um, to build a career. So how, how long do you want to be here for? But mate, as you said, I was, I was fortunate. I played every game my first year and you know, probably some of those games I didn't set the world on fire, but just able to play a role. And I think once they, Barmy and the group pushed me off half back and then started to do run with roles with best mids, that's where I started to learn my craft and learn where my position the team fit and you know, play on the best mids and learn myself, but also do a role for the team. And if that was my role, that's what I was going to do. Mm. And talk to me about some of the uh, guys that really helped you learn that along the way. I mean, I know Stephen Tingo was a big part of that. I know that for you. Um, any others that sort of taught you the, the way? Oh, geez, how, how good was our list back then in terms of the experience with um, Todd Viney, Jimmy, Gary, yeah. the Phoebes, the Lovitz. Yeah. Um, Primkey, yeah, you know, so and we were blessed, weren't we, when we mm. first arrived at the footy club of um, the knowledge and the tutelage that we were learning yeah. as a young group, and uh, we were a great young group. We were pretty fortunate enough to um, all be playing together, but have that experience around us mm. um, to teach us the habits, you know, and build great habits to extend our careers and make sure we we're there for a very long time. Uh, we were blessed. Mm. And don't get me wrong, we, we trained hard, but we also played pretty hard back then, didn't we, mate? Now, we came <laughs> we came through. Remember, Brent Gergich, Alistair Nicholson, we're all sort of drafted in the same year. And I just spoke to Schwarter about this, about how you build a, a you create a culture of the guys that come in at the same time and hope you can build towards something. And we really did that with that group, didn't we? But it was it was uh, set early with a fair bit of, of this stuff, you know, a few drinks. Yeah. Even I was some... a bit surprised when I first arrived at the club was that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was prominent most most weeks. <laughs> Every there were even nights we would go out to the Hallam pub on a Thursday night and have maybe yeah. one or two before a Saturday game. It's probably the, the biggest surprise for me when I first arrived that when we didn't have our first year, that socially it wouldn't be as great. But mm. most weekends you'd generally see daylight on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Even with Stephen Tingo one year. And that red rooster was just around the corner. That got yeah, a yeah. smacking from us on a on a Sunday, probably around about five o'clock when we rolled out of bed. <laughs> get, yeah, get those... oh, is this actually a professional environment? What are we supposed to be doing here? <laughs> exactly right. But that's the difference, and that's what I like about uh, what I'm doing right now. Is I'm talking to guys and I'm remembering that we used to. What they do now is so different to what. And you see it because you've coached. Uh, of late and you've seen how professionally they have to be prepared and how they finish a game they're not drinking or anything like that we we sort of we played up a bit didn't we but geez i don't think i don't think we were required back to the junction until about 2 30 on a monday afternoon so it was nice uh, recovery and these habits weren't formed on a sunday they were asleep (laughs) trying trying to recover that's right hey brownlow 2000 uh we've got a guy this year clary oliver that'll come close uh i would have thought you might win it mate maybe he might win it um it's going to be between him and a couple others obviously bontempelli's had a great year as well but uh you in 2000 uh had a really solid year i mean there were some games that you were really on fire and it's about consistency of effort, isn't it? So talk to me about 2000, not just for you and winning the Brownlow medal, but the team as well. And then tell me, how what, how hard was it to calm your nerves grand final week knowing that you've just won the ultimate individual prize and you're still going for that team prize? Yeah, 2000 was set off the back of conversations, I think, in Cancun of 99. <laughs> yes, they were. It was built there. Just, this is ridiculous how we finished in 99. Let's start to train and become a club that we want to become. Um, so 2000 in our pre-season was built off hard work and let's make this now a consistent um, effort as to what we want to see from the club week in, week out, year in, year out. So mm. that's where I think 2000 stemmed from. Mm. Um, and I think 40 gave us um, license really to effectively really run our programs the way we wanted to, mm. you know, whether we forward, middle, back. So, um, all right, mate, started... I think I started in the back pocket on Miranda in my in round one, Mark and Miranda. then went to a wing, and then round three in Sydney was I started in a wing. Phoebe's got hurt. I went down back at halftime. Dana said, "Put you in the mid," and then it stemmed from there, mate. So round three to uh, eight or nine, we're after Port, and you have fifteen votes after round eight. It's, mm. It was a pretty exciting start. Mm. Flattened off. Come good end of the year. Um, didn't expect it. Won the bloody medal. So. Yeah. Um, 
oh mate extraordinary night extraordinary few days probably would do things a little differently if i had my if you ever ever had your time again and yeah um, how i how i would set that week up but yeah post post wednesday afternoon it was then all prep work for the you know one of the biggest games of our lives so all much a blur really don't remember a hell of a lot of the week yeah. don't remember the game a hell yeah. of a lot but um yeah it was an exciting week it was just built a festival of footy and that's what it was well they say you got to lose one to win one and and I, Stephen Tinga I think no who, who was it? I think it might lost, have been I lost two yeah well yeah you went to Collingwood and lost one again but you know we won't talk about that but but Stephen uh, no it might have been uh, Nita that said that um, you know we didn't necessarily prepare well with our training um, going into the grand final we trained the day before after the parade we didn't finish till one or two o'clock in the afternoon we we're probably a little bit spent had we had the time again we'd train the day before get home and rest gonna want to shunner all that sort of stuff but um you know how do you prepare for a grand final they say you got to lose one to win one don't understand what it's all about yeah it's a uh, it's an interesting week isn't it um uh, preparation's the key and mm. i think preparation runs strong with individuals in particular and it probably was a little bit different that week wasn't it for yeah. us i don't think that was what um cost us the game i think we started well yeah. and we're probably overawed by the occasion after that and i think um, the physicality of essen and probably overawed us mm. really towards um after quarter time really they sort of but man heck, they're a class outfit i remember having a coffee with danners a couple of times and it was one occasion here in the west and probably 06 where he even thought we should have done a few things different, whether or not we approach it more yeah. physically and yeah. swing a few. Yeah. Or he was even thinking and contemplating of training differently that week to do something um, defensively different. So we more press and zone rather yeah. than do what we did back then. So but it's pretty hard to teach a group in one week yeah. and new behaviours. So it didn't eventuate and we get belted. It was all Nita's fault. If he'd have kicked those goals early in the game, we would have won it for sure. So yeah. we'll blame Nita. <laughs> Yeah. it's easy to do <laughs> it was off to a good start hit the scoreboard meter yeah that's all we needed yeah. anyway it doesn't yeah. matter um, <laughs> yeah. well good early though with oh, good energy I felt I felt in 2000 that we were right there I, I really do I think 98 we were a lot uh, better in terms year, of balance yeah. in, in old and new but in 2000 we just had that youth and that exuberance and uh, yeah we did need to get off to a good start and everything had to go our way a couple of uh, our blokes got belted, famously. Uh, yeah, Troy Simmons is st about, Simo. Is, still hasn't woken up from that hit from Longy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, mate, I, I want to ask you about your early memories of the Junction Oval and training and, and some of the hardships there and knowing what you know about um, professional clubs now. How do you compare what we were doing back then to what they're sort of you know doing now, but even good clubs back then? Yeah, mate, uh, how bad was the Junction? back then you know, we were in a cesspit occasionally um probably rivaled a little bit of time when i spent that six weeks at the kangaroos instead of sort of what's a sort of facility you deal with but yeah. um horrendous gym was the size of a garage yep. single garage you're trying to fit, fit 40 players in that um yeah room to move wasn't great i remember i had a story where i remember in, um some of our post-training uh, nutrition was um, some yogurt, some killer pythons, and some muffins from Coles around the yeah. corner on a three-legged card table. Yeah, yes, <laughs> muesli bars, yeah. sugar loaded yeah. muesli bars. But you had to put a dollar in to get one. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's right. Oh, we had to pay for our footies. Really? We yeah. had to pay a hundred bucks for yeah. our footies. Yeah, and then uh, Ronnie engraved your name on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I, the junction was a great deck itself other than winter when the cricket pitch got a little bit wet. But, oh, look, uh, I was pretty blessed when I got to the Pies and get to the Lexus Centre. But um, we did it tough, didn't we, with, we did. um, you know, different venues to train, morning and afternoon. Um, yeah, not having that one base was really difficult yeah. for us all. But um, I wouldn't change it for the world, though, yeah. for what we had. And um you, you let those things affect you but we certainly didn't and we only can could control what we did and they were what we had and we used it to the best of our ability 100 percent um i've got to ask you about that transition from melbourne to collingwood it wasn't an easy time for you i know the fans would love to know your side of the story um probably won't give away too much but you know you would have rather have stayed at melbourne it didn't eventuate just just touch on it mate for us let us know where you're at with all of that oh mate yeah it's um took 
umpteen years to probably get over yeah. um, and having strong conversations with Neil and, and great conversations. I had a great coffee with Neil a few years ago here in Perth and three hours in Scarborough was fantastic yeah. um, just to probably uh, let the dust settle on it all and what had happened. And, oh, yeah, look, it wasn't a great time in the career. I wanted to be a Melbourne player for life and become one a one club player. Didn't mm. eventuate. Mm. Would have liked to stay? Absolutely. Um, but it just become untenable in mm. the end. And um, yeah, disappointed with how it how it happened. And promised that I'd be, uh, particularly after O two, promised I'd be part of the group in O three. And uh, when it didn't eventuate, it sort of cut a bit deep. And I probably let my emotional emotions get a hold of me. Um, post that in a couple of media interviews and got a bit filthy and yeah. probably should have tamed that a little bit. And, um, but look, once I went to the black and whites, it was um, that was it for me, and I enjoyed my time there also. Just get on with it. Now I yeah. I know what you look like when you first got drafted. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't know this. Well, he was one of the first. No, it might have been Stephen Tinga. He was shaving his legs early days and uh, not he a got it off Stinger. Not a st- not a, sk- a stitch of hair on him, was there? <laughs> He'd get it all off, brought, put the the uh, fake tan solariums, all of that Solarium, sort of stuff. Then, yeah, you, you jumped in with all of that, didn't you? You, you really did. did. You rolled with yeah, it. Look good, feel good, play good, Robbo. <laughs> <laughs> feel good, yeah. I, I remember at the end of one year, you and I, and we decided to go down. Early ninety eight. Ta- yeah, we've decided to go down to Tasmania to kind of recover. Um, yeah. Very boring place, Tasmania. You went to my Heart hometown. Ear infections. Yeah, you had it. Yeah. <laughs> Eye infection, that's right. Ear infection. We both did. Yeah. I might have been pink We were for a week in your oh, mum and dad's house. We were. But I was, we were in the kitchen, mum and I, having a cup of tea. And mum goes, what's what are we doing? I look out the window and there you are with a bucket of water and a razor blade and you're shaving your thighs and up into your groin. And I'm like, yeah, that's just why we, that's what we do. She's like, never had those problems back when I was growing up. Yeah. <laughs> said, mum, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> weekly routine build habits yeah good on you mate um yeah. and i saw this photo i don't know if you can see this mate and for the fans out there we'll put it up for you this photo was flashed up on my can you see that up yeah. on my facebook Gosh. that's your boy that's yep. tj uh tj t tjw um he's uh he looks exactly like you it's unbelievable <laughs> i did the double look i'm like why he's playing for wa again yeah <laughs> someone says he's got a running gait like me too but he's a, um he's a better skilled player than i was at 18. have a look at that he's even got the wrist guard thing or the wrist tape on and written words on it like you used to do he's doing every the handball the face it's exactly like you mate how's he play <laughs> talk to me about that because we want to see him uh, in the red and the blue it's exciting for him at the moment um yeah he's a good player he's had a solid 21 campaign um didn't play 16 state um got into the team this year into the squad played his first state game against South Australia last weekend uh, performed well um, exciting we're blessed over here we get to play footy and uh, the kids and the WA and SA boys do unlike the Victorians at the moment so uh, very fortunate uh, but it was great to get the under 19s campaign away and mm. he loves his footy um, week to week he's man, he's he's got strengths um, he's got deficiency in his game. He's working hard on, and yeah. uh, just um, just enjoys being on the field. Loves it. Um, he's a footy head, um, so he's captain of East Fremantle here in the Colts program. So they'll play finals uh, next week, yeah. um, which is really exciting for him. And he's um, yeah, he's just learning every every week and mm. just being part of it and seeing what the journey looks like for him going forward. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. Got the shaved legs as well. You can see that from Yeah, here. it does. <laughs> Just like father, like son. My word. Uh, I hope he's not like you with a lot of other things that I know of. But anyway, we won't get into that. Now, Wowie, toughest opponent. Who Who's your toughest opponent? Who did you find really hard? Uh, and I played on some greats of the game. You know, Harvey, Voss, Rashudo, Buckley, <laughs> Cloud, um, Cuda, yeah. West, Ratton. But I, I thought the toughest opponent was Michael Voss. Yeah. Um, whether it's inside, mid, or playing, or him taking you forward, mm. um, he was a beast. Yep. He's tough, uncompromising, yeah. leadership personified, um, extraordinary individual on the footy field and led by example. And when he was in your face, he was in your face. Yeah. And he, um, I thought he led that group really well for three or four years, even longer. But, yeah, um, yeah. incredibly tough, incredibly tough. And he let you know about it too. So I found him the most difficult, I reckon. 
Oh, mate, some tremendous players you had to play on. My first game was over there in West, in the West. We played yeah, at the Wacker. Remember that game? It was yes. driving rain like 10 minutes before we went out the ground. Like oh, you couldn't see the other side of the ground. And then by the time of the, the start of the game, well, we ran out, the rain had stopped and it like it never happened in the ground. It was yeah. beautiful. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, this is, this is wonderful. And then over walks Johnny Walsfold and bang, straight bang. across the chest and Lily Kay's my chest. And I go, ah, uh, <laughs> baptism of fire much? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome and I, to footy, Robert. Yeah, and everywhere I walked, I was walking around the ground and he was doing, you know, that flat tyre thing where they try to step on your back of your boot so it yeah, comes yeah. off. Every step, my boot was coming off and I'm putting it back on. I'm like, please stop, Mr. Waswold. Please stop. <laughs> How good was he? <laughs> he had this weird eye and look in his face like, this guy's not all there. He's crazy. Oh, built like a brick shit house too, wasn't he? <laughs> he Solid. Oof. He was, he was. Mate, that's been awesome, uh, talking about old times. We could go on forever about it. Oh, got to get a quick comment. On the on the team at the moment. Oh man, I think uh, I think I think behaviourally they've changed too. I think they would have done a lot of work pre-season culturally value and what they value a lot in in the game. And mm. I think defence has been that. So, and without being inside the four walls and internally what's going on, I see a real different mindset and a real attitude change defensively, which only sets their attack up. I think off the back of that, and we know how good they are in the contest, yeah. whether that's early. Or on the ground level, so which has been a strength of theirs for the last two or three years. But um, I think their defence has improved that much that it's helping them in the games. Their mm. mids haven't been great in transition in in past years, where mm. I think now that complements them now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's pretty exciting for them, isn't it? It's yeah. been great to see the club and the group of where it's at now. They're they're playing on great energy, mm. a healthy list. Um, you know, they dominated last week. And a, and a really good patch. So mm. uh, fingers crossed for this group that hopefully 2021 is their year. And mm. I, it's, it's a different game, as we know, September, and they've still got to get through this next weekend but yeah. to see who will challenge them. Um, but uh, all things aside, they're, they're looking the goods at the moment and f they'll be raging favourites. It is really good to see. And what is good to see is you, my friend. There you go, ladies. I produce. Don't say Robbo doesn't do it. anything for you. I got the great man from the West over there. He's a family man. He has a stepson, two daughters who are very hard challenging at times, especially the youngest one. And TJ is just an absolute ripper, playing some good football. Mate, that's been wonderful catching up. Thank you for joining me on, on Robbo Live. And uh, Russell Robertson Live loves you. Great man. Thanks for us. Good to speak to you. See you and good day to all the listeners.